So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Jonathan Coddington. I'm the Associate Director for Science here at the National Museum of Natural History. And I'd like to welcome everyone today to today's symposium, Genomics and Our Health, What Does the Future Hold? Um, before we start, I'd like to give you a little context about the venue here today. Uh, the museum's history is essentially coextensive with that of the Smithsonian, founded in 1846. So, uh, about 170 years old, and our mission is to understand the natural world and our place in it. Uh, we have about a standing crop of about 400 PhD scientists here at any one time, and uh, we're also stewards of the largest collection of natural history on Earth, some 129 million specimens. Uh, we're also the most visited natural history museum uh, in the world, hosting annually about 8 million visitors, uh, the second most visited um, museum in the world. Uh, if you're curious, the Louvre is first. <laughs> and our scientists study anthropology and geology, but uh, the research focus relevant today is biology, specifically genomics and human health. Um, actually, the Smithsonian does quite a lot of genomics. In fact, about the only thing we don't do is human-oriented genomics. We stay away from things like health, and we study things like nematodes and worms and bananas and sloths and nemertian worms. Um, so from species discovery to phylogeny through ecology, evolutionary, and conservation genomics, it does research and outreach on essentially every major branch of genomics. In fact, in a few uh, weeks, we're going to announce the new Smithsonian Institute for Biodiversity Genomics. And uh, this museum has, in fact, opened the largest natural history repository, biorepository on Earth. That's about 30 liquid nitrogen tanks and about 58 freezers. Um, in preparation for a synoptic survey of all of life on Earth. Not all species, but every major branch of life on Earth. We would like to use our convening power to organize the extension of human genomics, the power of that technology, and understanding uh, the genomics of essentially the single genome of life on Earth. Um, we're also leading our own effort, the Global Genome Initiative, to sample those things. So today's symposium is the crowning event in the last 16 months of public events that NIH and NMNH have hosted in conjunction with our joint exhibit, Genome Unlocking uh, Life's Code. Uh, this is a joint project, of course, between us, and I'd like to gratefully acknowledge uh, the spo all sponsors of the museum, particularly Johnson & Johnson, uh, for uh, sponsoring the exhibit and today's symposium. While the exhibit was here, it was seen by an astonishing 3.8 million people, uh, an extraordinary number of lives we touched with the message for genomics. It's now on its tour as a traveling exhibit, and it opened last week at San Diego's Ruben H. Fleet Science Center, the start of many traveling venues in the USA and Canada. So um, I won't, I'll just, before I introduce Seema, I would like to re remind you that this evening we have a conversation with Carolyn Hacks on human health, genetics, and disease. And I'd also like to thank the panelists for their participation. And in particular, just at this moment, I'd like to ask all the people from NIH and from the Natural History Museum and the foundation for NIH that were involved in the design, content, and production of the exhibit to stand for a moment of appreciation. It was, a, it was a great job, and I'm sorry that it closed and left. In fact, I think we should have kept it for another year. Uh, but anyway, now I'd like to introduce Seema Kumar of Johnson & Johnson. She's the Vice President of Innovation, Global Health, and Policy Communication. Seema. <laughs> 